Okay, let's talk about shallow versus deep copy in JavaScript. So I have a few uh, objects and arrays here. I've got a, a very shallow array, so there's basically one set of um, values, nothing complex about them, each one is a, a primitive value. Then a deep array would be where you've got some primitive values potentially and then some more complex values. So I've got an array inside of an array, an object inside of an array. And you can do the same thing with objects. Create properties. Some of the properties have primitive values. Some of the properties have complex objects. Now, the way things work in JavaScript is that most of the time you're dealing with uh, passing values by reference, unless you're dealing with primitives. So these are primitive values right here, just like here, I've got two variables, s, where I've put Steve, the string, in here. String is a primitive. And then I've assigned s to g. Now, because s was a primitive value, what happens is the value just gets copied over into this new variable. When I assign a new value to the string s, I'm not changing what's inside of g. So when I write them both out, here it is, new value. That's what's inside of S, and Steve is still inside of G. So that's because I was using a primitive. Now, if I repeat this same thing with the array, <coughs> pardon me, take the, the uh, shallow array from up here, and I want to copy it. If I just create a new variable, so let ARR equal the shallow array. Okay, now it looks just like what I've done here. But what's actually happening is, because shallow array was not a primitive value, this is now a reference to this. So if I try to change the value, let's say I will change the first value inside there, which I think was a number. Yes. So I'm going to change this 1, 2, 3 to 4, 5, 6. And then we'll write them both out. So we'll log that, and we'll write out the array, and then the shallow array. So both things being written out, same as before over here. Okay, great. So we see that the two values are the same because this right here was a reference to the shallow array, to that variable. Now the same thing would have happened regardless of which ones. It's because these are not primitive values. The whole thing is not a primitive value. If it's just one primitive value, you're fine. So there are some ways to copy over, like, okay, I really do want a new copy of this. Here's some examples of some shallow copying methods. So uh, there's a lot more with uh, um, arrays than with uh, objects, but we can use array.from to copy one over. So if we did this, so array is array.from. I'm going to copy that over. Now we can go back and change this. Let's take a look and see what we get. There, now array has the original one, two, three, and the other one has the four, five, six. So the shallow array, we've changed the value without affecting this. So we can use these other ones as well. There's the spread operator we can use to take the values from an array and copy them over individually. Um, so an example of that, we could say um, dot 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 shallow array, like this. So the spread operator will make a copy of it. Uh, we can use concat to combine two arrays like this. So you could take an empty array, do something like this. So an empty array concatenated with the one that we want to copy. Array one, so that's the one that we're copying. Uh, the spread operator, uh, array dot from slice, copying everything from position zero on, uh, and then with objects you can use object create or object assign to create copies. But all of these copies are shallow copies. So the problem that we had down here originally, where it was um, just taking the reference and putting into the second thing. That's what happens when you try to do a deep copy. So when I've got complex objects that have non-primitive values inside, even if I use these methods to get the individual values, what happens is 
That's primitive fine. That's primitive fine. That's primitive fine. When it gets to the complex objects, it says, oh, okay, we can't do just a copy here anymore. What we have to do now is create a reference. So we're going to give you a reference to this and copy that over. We're going to give you a reference and copy that over. Same thing in objects. If this is not a primitive value, you're going to get a reference to this thing that's copied over into the new object. So how do we get around that? Well, there's a few ways that we can do it. One of the uh, probably simplest ones to write is using JSON. The JSON object you can call parse and stringify. So let's do an example of that. I will actually I'll do it just above here. All right, let's say I want to create a copy of deep object. So we can say that uh, let new obj equal deep obj. Now that would create references to these things. Well, the whole thing would be a reference to begin with because deep obj <coughs> deep obj is not a primitive. So we have to say, oh, okay, well, I need to be able to copy the things over. Well, I could use the spread operator to copy things over. That's one way of doing it. But then I've got the problem where, well, once I get inside here, these first two things, those are going to be references as well. So I'm going to comment these other uh, console statements out just to keep this a little clearer. Okay, so I'm copying deep object into new object. I'm getting a reference that's placed inside of here because I'm doing this. I'm spreading it out. So I'm getting these properties copied over into the new object, but these two are going to be working with references. So uh, if I just console log them both them, console log both of them out, they're going to look the same. So I say new obj followed by deep obj. over refresh, there we are. So both of them are actually the same objects. The Gred 68 and Seasons, those are going to be uh, separate things. If I come in here and I change, let's say, only the new obj dot places number zero, I'm going to change it from corner gas to, let's say, Ottawa. There we go, and we refresh this. We open them up, there's Ottawa and Ottawa as well. I only changed one of them, but it changed in both because this array was a reference point in memory. Okay, so changed inside the reference. Now, slightly different, if I said new obj.places equals Ottawa and uh, Calcutta. Refresh that. We look. Ottawa, Calcutta, that's in the new obj. Okay, that's the one that we changed. Come down here. Hey, look, we've got the original. And that's because we've replaced the entire value of that. So we've destroyed the reference to this array by doing that. So new reference was created because we changed the entire thing, everything that's inside there. Okay, so I want to copy it over. I want to get copies of these guys as well so that I'm not dealing with the reference and I don't have to worry about this numbered reference or if these were objects inside I didn't have to use the um, I didn't have to worry if I was targeting a specific property inside of the object you know, what would happen then? Uh, well, I'd be changing both things. So I want to get away from that. And that's what a deep copy is really all about. So with a deep copy, as I was saying, one of the things that we can do is this. So let other obj equal, and I can copy either one of these. These are basically the same thing. Uh, so we can say that json.parse, json.stringify, and then we put in our object here. So, <clears throat> this is kind of a two-step process. First, we take deep obj, we stringify it. So, we destroy all this. We're making a string copy of everything that's here, all the data. 
then we're going to parse it, meaning that we're going to take the new string that we just created and turn that back into an object. So now, even if it's like three, four levels deep, I've turned it into a string and I've brought it back into an object. Then I can say other obj number zero equals Ottawa. And we'll console log them out again. So other obj and deep obj. Okay, so here's the first one where we had new obj and deep obj, and those are identical. And then down here, oh, sorry, I put a zero in here. This should have been places, dot places sub zero. Fix that. There we go. So now they're looking the same. All right, inside of other obj, we have places, number zero is Ottawa. And inside deep obj, places, number zero is corner gas. So the thing that failed up here is working now because we've made a deep copy and that's what this is going to do. So probably the simplest syntax is doing this and this will work. Now there are other methods. If you use service workers, you can create a service worker. <clears throat> you can post a message to the service worker. It'll receive the message and that will be a new object that you can then send back. Um, with the history API, you've got history.push state and history.replace state. Both of those methods allow you to pass an object in. This will be a deep copy as well. Uh, the new notification API in the web, or in the browser rather, when you create a notification, there is a data property. The second parameter is an object to where you're passing in things to it. There's a data parameter inside that object. You can pass in that object. You are going to be getting a copy, a deep copy of that object, and then you can use the dot data property at the end of this, which will pass you back the new deep copy. Or you can build a custom refer recursive function. If you know what the things are inside that you want to copy, if you know what the arrays or objects inside of your other array or object are, then you can write your own function that will extract those things individually. It's a little bit of work, whichever way you do it, if you absolutely have to have a deep copy of an object. Now, depending on which browser you're using, depending on the object you're using, you will get different performance results for these things. Um, the JSON parse, it can be a little bit cumbersome if, or not cumbersome, but uh, time consuming for the browser if it's a really big object. Um, most of the time, you don't need to do this. Uh, just be aware of the difference between the shallow copy and the deep copy and how the two of them work together. Um, be aware that you may end up with those references instead of actually copying over arrays and objects, things that aren't primitive values from inside of your arrays or objects. All right, so I hope that helps you understand how this works in JavaScript, the passing by reference, the deep copy, shallow copy. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Uh, if you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.